Look at that face, y'all. That is the Paragon of Beauty right there. Hey y'all, Jackie here. Welcome to Fantastical Follies, where we get up to various sewing shenanigans. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back to the insanity, my friends. Today, I'm making my prettiest star pannier, a set of 18th century hoops made with a glam rock twist. The hoops I'm making are based on an extant example from Patterns of Fashion 5. They're dated from 1740 through 1780, which means that these are going to work for a lot of different decades. I am all about the multi Taskers. In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step through the process of making this pannier using modern materials while still using historically adequate construction techniques, mostly. This project seemed impossible to make without specialty equipment. If you'd like to see how I adapted it into something that anyone could make using basic tools they already have, I hope you'll keep watching. This is the sixth video in my Glam Rock Goes Rococo series in which I'm turning myself into a historically inspired Ziggy Stardust. If you've missed any of those videos, I've linked the entire playlist in the description below. The hoops in question are jointed, which means that they fold flat for storage. Original Originally, I wanted to make the center front and backs jointed as well, so it folded like a slice of pizza, but with one thing or another, I ran out of time to noodle that out. But if someone wants to take the time to figure that out, please tag me once you're finished because I want to see that shit. The original hoops are made of two iron wires wrapped in thread, covered in fabric, and suspended using ribbons. The joints of the three hoops are metal pins that are then covered in little bits of leather to protect the wearer. I was flummoxed about how to translate this into modern day. Where do I buy iron wire? How do I cut it and make joints? Am I going to have to buy all of this specialty equipment just to make my hips huge? I thought about using steel hoop boning. I found some on corsetmaking.com and reached out to the owner to ask if it was even possible that this material could be used. She was kind enough to give me some advice. Yes, the steel boning would work. And suggested an alternative, extra thick synthetic whalebone. Okay, hear me out. Synthetic whalebone is lighter than steel, can be cut using pliers, you can poke holes in it, which meant I could find a jointing alternative, and you can form it with heat. Done. Do stick with me till the end where I'll discuss whether this was the right decision or not. Materials. I bought a 10 yard roll of extra thick 12 millimeter synthetic whalebone. You could probably use the six millimeter size if you'd like, but if you're going to recreate this, make sure you use the extra thick and not the regular thickness because it won't hold up your skirts. Because the roll cost me about 30 bucks, not including shipping, I was determined to build the rest of this pannier using stuff I already had. So I pulled out some poly purple lining from my donate pile to wrap the hoops in. I also had a very large roll of black poly grain ribbon that I bought for something. It seemed like a perfect thing to use for the ribbons. Then you'll also need a smattering of other supplies. Heavy duty pliers, some heavier gauge wire, needle nose pliers, glue gun and hot glue, hair dryer. Hair dryer? Yep. The plan. I'll enlarge the pattern from the book and print it out to use as a guide. I didn't go into detail about this, but if you'd like a video explaining how, let me know in the comments below. I was super intimidated by the process, but it's actually ridiculously easy. I'm then going to heat mold the boning to the correct shape, then wrap it in thread and hand sew fabric around it. Then I'll attach them all with ribbons to the center fronts and backs and proceed to cover it all in glitter puff paint. Is anyone surprised? Let's get started. Okay, it is the end of March, it is 8 p.m. I have been working since 7.45 this morning. Um, I will probably be working until nine o'clock tonight, maybe 
9 30 10. however after almost two whole months of waiting i've finally gotten the boning to start on this pannier so i went ahead and printed out my pattern so i'm gonna go ahead and get this all taped together now i will not be cutting this out because i'm planning on using this only as a guide. However, I'm not gonna do this on camera because nobody wants to watch somebody tape a bunch of sheets of paper together. So I'll see you later. Welcome to what is arguably the weirdest shot ever. I couldn't figure out a good way to film this where I could see and the camera could see. So uh, we are getting a very, very strange shot of my slowing slash exercise area. I was all ready to get started on this the other day. Then I looked at it and was like, hmm. Now reading the explanation in Patterns of Fashion 5, it says they suspect that the markings indicate that this was made for somebody with a 22 inch waist. And originally I was thinking, oh, well, is that really gonna matter? Like, cause it's, it's an adjustable waistband. I wasn't quite sure. But then I thought about it a little bit and was thinking, I better test it before I break into this boning because this boning is expensive. And since I can't really do a mock-up because the boning is expensive, I just wanted to check and make sure. So here is the two scale uh, front of the pannier and it looks huge like I'm pushing the silhouette a little bit here but I've committed so this is what we're doing so when you put it down to my hips you can see that the edge of the pannier right here hold on right here can you see that maybe the other side here it's it's kind of hitting my thigh a little bit so i think i am going to make it larger i do not want to faff about trying to enlarge the whole thing i have everything already printed i've already lost more than a month almost two months really of work on this i'm so behind and there's other things i want to accomplish this year not just this costume so instead of trying to scale it out what I think I'm going to do is right here in the middle, right here in the center front, and then obviously the center back, I'm gonna cut and just do a basic slash and spread here in the middle of the pannier on this, on this piece. And my theory is, is that if I make the base bigger in the center, then it won't affect any of the length of the ribbons any of the length of the hoops, it'll just make it wider enough to fit around my wider hips. So I'm going to cut into this in the front and add five inches and cut into the back and add five inches because that's approximately the uh, waist difference between me and the original person. So I'm thinking that should suffice. Wish me luck, y'all. I used scrap bits of the grid to expand the center front and back to make my life easier. Then I tested the widened hoop and liked it. So here is my printed out pattern. This is to scale. This is the synthetic plastic whalebone I'm going to be using to structure the pannier. I have some heavy duty pliers. I just got these at Harbor Freight. They're like 10 bucks and I'm sure that they will serve me for many purposes for a very long time. And then all else you need is pencil. This is essentially the outside two hoops. So the two larger hoops, the bottom hoop and the middle hoop on the left-hand side of the book. So I'm assuming that that means this is the right side of the body if I'm wearing it. I cut the boning to the length I wanted, but before I tape it to my pattern, I need to poke some holes. So the first thing we need to do is poke some holes so that we have a place to put our wires. Now, uh, I'm gonna apologize, this is like a crackling candle, so if you hear some weird crackling noises, that's what that is. However, I, I particularly like this candle because it doesn't have like a rounded lip. It's, it sits nice and flat, like this one kind of, it doesn't work quite as well. Um, so y'all will have to deal with the crackling. Now, this is the left bottom, and this is kind of overexposed. I have here a metal skewer. Um, this is meant for grilling shish kebabs. You can get them at your grocery store. I got 
four of these for a dollar. And they're wonderful, they're nice and pokey so you can poke your friends with them. And also, poke holes in your boning. Woo! First thing I'm gonna do is set the tip of this into the flame, okay? And I'm resting it on these this other candle so that it lays flat so it sits there. And I give it about, I don't know, 20 seconds. This isn't rocket science. As you can see, I have marked a quarter of an inch down from the edge of my boning, and this is where I'm gonna poke the hole. There we go, ooh! That's what we were looking for. Then we have a nice little hole. Let's do the other side. I'm gonna do the other side. I'm gonna poke from the inside instead of the outside for this one. There we go, there we go. It figures, you know, the first one that I did was really easy, and the second one, of course, because I'm on camera, it was not so nice. So now that that's done, this one is probably cooled, and I'm just going to take some regular old sandpaper and just sand away that excess plastic that came out of the hole. I'm gonna make sure it's smooth because this is gonna be up against your fabric. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so there we have a nice little hole and we'll stick our wire through that and that'll be what holds everything together. It is time to do some shaping. Now, I'm not going to show you this whole process um, because it's about as interesting to watch as it is to actually do, but I am gonna show you the hardest part, which is the ends of the hoops. Now, all I'm gonna do is use a standard hair dryer on the hottest setting, on the highest setting to do this. So I have this nozzle attachment on because it concentrates the air better on the boning than if it was just off, this comes off. But in any case, a couple of things to note as you're doing this, you really need to get the boning hot. It needs to be so hot that you, you don't wanna touch it for too long, otherwise it won't set quite as well. Um, you do want to tape it generously down and especially on the ends because it definitely wants to curl in and um, we want it to be straight here. And when you focus your heat, you want to focus mostly on the weirdest parts of the, the hoops, which are the two ends and then the curvy bit here. You don't need to spend as much time here as you do on the ends and here, okay? So I'm gonna get this started. I'm gonna turn the sound off of the video because this is noisy as all get out and uh, start showing you how I do this. Okay, so now that it's hot, I'm just bending it back a little bit, kind of coax it into the shape that I want. Boom. Okay, so you get the point, right? I'm using the I'm using the dryer. I do I have been leaving it to sit for probably 30 seconds after I've done shaping it around once or twice. So I'm gonna listen to music while I do this. I spent about a song, like a four minute song on each hoop. And um, that's kind of enough to shape it. So I'm gonna go do that off camera and I will check back with you after I finished. That one is done. Make sure that they're taped really well. If they still wanna curl, you can take something heavy. I usually use my weights and kind of push, push the edges out kind of guide it into the right direction like that. And I'm gonna go get these out of the way and let them sit for two to three days. Uh, I found that overnight was not quite long enough. Um, so two to three days, the longer the better really, but um, this takes up a lot of space. So you may not wanna leave it that long. Here's a view you don't usually get, the couch view. I am going to show you how I wrap the pannier hoops in thread. Now, originally on the extant garment, it's made of two iron wires and the entire part of the hoop is wrapped in thread. I ain't got time for that. Nobody's got time for that. I'm sure that it's wrapped purely to help protect the wearer from the iron wires, but I can understand the logic behind it because 
not only does it protect from the wires, but it also serves as a landing point for your needle when you're sewing the fabric. And the particular fabric that I've picked to wrap these hoops in is poly lining fabric and it's slippery as all get out. So I thought that it would be a good idea to wrap at least part of it. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. The synthetic whale bone isn't sharp. It isn't gonna hurt me or anything like that, but I think it's worth it to do a little bit of wrapping. Okay, so what I have done on this hoop is marked on the inside where all of the ribbon anchors are going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna wrap only in these bits where the ribbon anchors are gonna be. I, ga I gave myself a little bit, like a half an inch on each side of the ribbon marker. So I'll do on the end and then these points, see, and then here. Okay, so originally I was using super glue for this. I liked the idea of it being low profile, but it also took ages to set. So instead I'm opting for hot glue. And if I'm honest, it is slightly more dangerous, but given that I worked in a restaurant for so long and play the guitar, my fingers are virtually indestructible even so much to the fact that, all right, this is kind of gross, but I have to share it. I can do this. I mean, that doesn't hurt at all. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, this is the blue hoop. I've done most of these already. I'm gonna take about, I don't know, call it a foot of thread and take some glue and smear some glue on. Men smear, smear, that's it. And then this, this, thread I'm going to wrap real quick around where the glue is, kind of get it set. And you want to do this quick before it gets too cold and then smear so it's a little bit lower profile and then what I'll do is I'll keep wrapping to cover the excess glue. Okay and then we just go from there. And as you wrap, you kind of want to like go, go down the boning. Ooh, I'm stuck. You wanna go down the boning like this and then you can push it up so it creates a nice little dense wrap of thread. This reminds me of like the hair wrapping things that they used to do in the 90s to kids' hair. Does anybody else remember that? I found that the two end ones are easy enough but as you get towards the center it gets a little wonky and you have to really be careful about not whacking yourself okay so when you get to the end of where you want to go again I'm gonna cut off about a foot and then uh, once again I'll put a little glue and this time I kind of want to go into the existing thread and then once again we'll wrap real quick and do a little smear and let that cool and then snip any rogue ends. And that's it, it's real pretty, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, each hoop takes me about half an hour to 45 minutes depending on how focused I am. And now for a practical demonstration. I wasn't kidding when I said you really have to work to avoid whacking yourself in the face with this. Look at that action. I mean, she's really dodging there. Whoa, can we get a slow-mo on that? Oh man, look at that face, y'all. That is the paragon of beauty right there. See, I told you there'd be a rainbow. It's almost sad that you're not actually going to see this in the finished product. I was thinking about ways to keep all of the hoops straight, given that nothing will stay marked on this for long. And since I was wrapping it with thread, the logical thing was, well, let's make it a rainbow. There's six hoops. There's seven colors in a rainbow, but nobody really has indigo stuff anyway. So this is it. And it's kind of pretty, definitely went more on the pastel side 
And if I had known that to start out with, I probably would have used pink instead of red, but that was an afterthought. So yep, there is my rainbow. Okay, I got home from work last night and looked at this hoop and decided that I just don't like the purple. What I like is the rainbow and I'm stuck on this rainbow thing. So I raided my stash last night, much to my neighbor's annoyance, I'm pretty sure, because I was kind of loud about it. I found almost every single color I need for a pastel rainbow in quilting cotton, which is great because one, I can tear it on grain and it's going to behave so much better than this terrible, terrible fabric. Uh, two, it's easier to work with. It's easier to sew. I have already torn out and folded most of my colors. Here's the yellow. I have to piece, I have to piece the pink because um, I had a very tiny amount of it. This is all I had. It's left over from a curtain, so that's okay. That's no big deal. Here's the orange. So I'm not quite sold on this green. I really, really like this fabric and I have enough to make something out of it. So I don't have any lavender, which is really frustrating because I know that I had lavender scraps laying around and I donated them. So I'm gonna have to go to the store and pick up probably a fat quarter or a very small amount of lavender cotton to complete my rainbow. Um, if they don't have anything, then I'll use the violet, but it's it, it doesn't quite look right. And so I'm also gonna look and see if I can find something green. I know that I'm not supposed to spend any more money on this project, but a couple more dollars isn't going to break the bank. And it's going to be the difference between me loving this project and being like meh about it. So I think in the long run, it's going to be worth a couple more dollars. I know that it's gonna suck to have to take two and a half of these out and pull off all of this hot glue, but you know, I'm gonna do it. I don't regret my decision. Best $6 I've spent in quite a while. With that decision, I've officially made what is probably the most flamboyant set of 18th century hoops that has ever been made. The only thing that would make it more flamboyant is if it was programmed to play the Ethel Merman disco album. If someone knows how to do that, please let me know. Alrighty folks, let's sew on this fabric. Step one, get yourself a thimble. Seriously, this is going to kill your hands. Step two, take the side with a smaller seam allowance and turn under the edge. Then whip stitch it down to the thread on the inside of the hoop. I'm using regular poly thread that's been waxed and doubled. I'm also using a nice, strong needle. Obviously, you can't sew on the naked boning, so I'm using my handy dandy glue gun for this job. I've learned that it's best to do just an inch at a time, pressing with your fingers so the fabric sets into the glue. If you do it all at once, the glue will solidify before you reach it with the fabric. For the second round of sewing, flip your hoop around, tuck under the edge, and fold it so the fabric overlaps slightly with the already sewn portion. Then do some more whipping, y'all. Now, this doesn't have to be pretty. Nobody's gonna see it. And trust me when I say that this is awkward and you're going to have a hard time making neat stitches. Another note, when you're sewing over the glued portion, you may not be able to get your needle through the glue. You can pull back and pick up some fabric from a non-glued portion, or if you're stubborn, you can try and push your needle through like I'm doing now. See how much my hands are shaking? Do this at your own risk. Now it's time for hot takes. If you don't care what it looks like, you can just use hot glue on all of this and save yourself a ton of time. It'll add weight though, and it's ugly. If you're cutting on grain and or using decent fabric to wrap your hoops, I recommend ironing in both edges before you start sewing. It makes your life easier and the ends neater. I do suggest turning in one side slightly less than your allotted seam allowance to account for some mild twist. If you're using squidgy fabric like I started out with, only turn over one edge. When you sew your first side, use the raw edge and don't turn under. I didn't do this with the first hoop and ended up having to glue most of it because there wasn't enough fabric to wrap around. 
Then it was time to cut the ribbons. This bit is fairly straightforward. For the ones that are already on my print and template, I'm simply measuring the length of each one and adding a one and a half inch seam allowance on each side. My boning is a half an inch wide. I'm then marking all of the meeting points with Taylor's chalk. I get smart at one point and find a metallic Sharpie, which isn't going to rub off like the chalk. I cut two ribbons half the size of my waist measurement, plus some for the waist ties. Commence hole punching as we did previously. Okay, so these are going to be the front and the back pieces. They're a little bit more complicated because we've got this right angle that we have to put on the bottom of each side. Now, this is the front piece. We're going to bend this down into a right angle. So I don't trust my hair dryer to do this, so I'm going to heat it up over a candle. And we don't want it to melt, okay? We just want it to get hot enough that I can bend it to a right angle. Now I'm going to do the same to the back, and then I will put a hole here for one of the hoops, and then another hole will go on top here for another hoop, and then there's a certain amount of space I go back, and I will then put the third one for the third hoop, and that'll happen on both sides, on both the front and the back. Okay, so molding the center fronts and backs was more complicated than the hoops, purely because the curves are not as straightforward. But um, ching I found I had to tape as I went instead of pre-taping, and I really had to leave the dryer there for a long time. In addition, I used my hand weights to help mold the curves while the boning cooled. It took me a good hour and 45 minutes to do the two, and I went over each one twice. I suggest you do this A, when the pets and kids are occupied in another area, and B, while you're doing something else nearby that you can stop and go. I got a lot of cleaning done while I did this. Then it was time to get the ribbons painted. I'm using the same pink metallic Lumiere fabric paint I used in my mullet stomacher to make the pannier match my underpinnings. I did two coats. These ribbons really suck up the paint. After that was dry, I went over it using my trusty gold puff paints, alternating stars and dots every inch. And no, you don't need to adjust your screen. That is a bulk size of gold glitter puff paint. I use it a lot, okay? Everything has now been covered in fabric and sewn down. As you can see, I already started to put the center ribbons on some of my hoops and then stopped and realized that was not the smartest order of operations. Instead, what I'm going to do is I am going to start from the top and work my way down. Here is the front and here is the back. And these are the ribbons that are going to hold the waistband to the front and the back. Essentially now what I'm gonna do is attach the, the letter side to the corresponding mark on here. And then this will get folded over, comme ça, and that's gonna be the hole where I put the waistband through. Once I get those ribbons on, then I can try it on, make sure everything is okay. Then I'm going to pin all of the ribbons to everything else because it is relative, like the, the length of the ribbon is going to change depending on, you know, how my measurements have gone. As always, I think I was overthinking everything. So after I spent some time away from this, I worked on another project and now I'm back. I am going to let the expert tell me how to put this together. In other words, instead of trying to be clever, I'm just going to mark everything, pin everything where it's marked. It should be right. If I have to make some minor adjustments from there, I will. One thing I do need to point out because I'm mature, the end of the yellow one is labeled as PP. Yep, I went there. So the first thing I did was put all of the center ribbons in because those aren't really going to change too much. There is a problem with it kind of buckling together because I don't think, even though this is very strong boning, it's still very flexible. So I'm, I'm toying with the idea of taking some wire and setting the wire in to keep it taut. Um, I don't wanna glue anything in yet, so 
I'm going to test that, but I have a theory that that's going to help me a lot. So I've got all of the center ones in, and then I also have these two, these loops. And from here, I'm going to try and get the other two loopy loop ones set, and then we'll work our way down. I did the first half off camera to make sure I wasn't bonkers. See, isn't it pretty? I'm starting with the top hoop, green, which has additional waist loops. I'm following my markings around, adding each piece as I go. Once I started doing this, it really clicked into place how this thing is assembled. The top two hoops, yellow and green, are linked to the waistband as well as the center's front and back. Then there are two long ribbons on each side that hold each hoop in relation to each other on the outside to counterbalance the three joints. Then the center's front and back are attached by a ribbon on each side. The best thing you can do if you're using this pattern is to really pay attention to your notations and make sure you A, get them all, and B, pay attention to the angles of the slanted markings. I messed this up, partially I think because I'm left-handed. Okay, once Roy and Jabouv were connected to each other, it was time to connect them to the centers. I really cannot figure out what the heck these two ribbons are for. Wait for the moment I get it. There it is. Mind blown. From there it was easy. Just gotta connect the waist tapes to all the loops. All right, Jax, could we get a drum roll please? Ta-da! All right, everything is pinned. I have put it on. Last night when I tried this on, I noticed that the center fronts and center backs were buckling very badly. The boning is too flexible to really create enough tension to hold the shape out. So I decided to whip stitch some 12 gauge wire onto the inside of the front and back pieces. I do wish I had thought of this, before I covered everything with fabric as I could have covered it all at once. And now I'm going to have to figure out a way to get the wire protected so it doesn't snag on my clothing. However, I don't regret it because the instant I sewed that wire on, it started holding its shape considerably better. However, you can see that uh, these hoops were not created equal. Partially that is because I was experimenting with, with the joins and trying to figure out what the best angle was. And um, all of them have different joins except the front of the Roy side, which is definitely the one that looks the best. I did have to make some slight modifications. I've pulled this center tape up a little bit and I've also tightened these a little, as you can see, they're kind of um, bubbling out here. It's because I pulled this one tighter and now there's slack. I'm going to fix the joins on this side. And um, I do think that this tape is probably not going to work. It's already stretching and it's gotten really small. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on Gertie. Hopefully Gertie will withstand the pressure. She's already leaning and this may be a disaster and we may capture it on camera. <laughs> now for the joints. The leg bones connected to the knee bone. The knee bones connected to the thigh bone. Okay, to join the ends together, first take a cut piece of wire and wrap half of it securely around the center portion of the joint. Then with the wire facing out, slide the hoop portion down over the wire, making sure that it fits flush against the center portion. Then wrap the remaining wire around the hoop bit, making sure it's as tight and secure as possible. Not the prettiest of joins, but it's easy and quick. Okay, now we're gonna pin it on the leaning tower of Gertie. Fingers crossed. Does anyone else wish they could grow a second set of hands out of their forehead? I sure do. It's about here where I realize that there's an issue with the ribbon that's supposed to hold tension between the center's front and back. That damn strap again. This is the point where I tell you that this has been the most injurious project I've done in a really long time. It's extremely hard on my hands between all of the pinning and the wires and the hot glue, even for someone like me with a high pain threshold. Oh look, a thimble! You should have done that a long time ago, dumbass. All right, y'all, I'm sorry that the lighting sucks and you can hear my fan clicking, 
But it is late in the evening and I wanted to show you what I've done before I cover it up. And what you're looking at now is the ribbon, the underside of the ribbon that holds the center front and the center back together. And what I did was I whip stitched more of this 12 gauge wire along the center of this ribbon on both sides because this was really buckling and it was making the front and back do some weird things. It does extend from the ribbon up here to the actual boning portion and I have hot glued it and made sure to hot glue over the top of it so that it's not sharp. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna fold this ribbon over, I probably won't do it that far, and just hot glue over that. I'm not gonna try and sew it. It is pretty ugly, but it has significantly reduced the weird floppage that was happening in the previous scene when I was trying to pin this on Gertie. So here is the other side that I've done. So you can see it's, it's sort of covered here. And then there's the wire. And it really has made a huge difference. So something to keep in mind if you are replicating this. Now that it's daylight, I'll show you what I did last night. Here is the wired ribbon. Not that pretty, but I mean, really nobody's going to see this. This is a utility thing. I'm making it snazzy just to make it snazzy. It doesn't really matter. There, there's the focus. Okay, so you can see the wire on the other side of the ribbon, but that's okay. Last night I finished sewing the majority of the ribbons. You can see I've got a lot of ribbon buckling things happening. I don't think that I got the angles right, but it's still holding up pretty well. So all I have left to do are the center ribbons here. I did end up taking off both sides of the orange one and one side of the red just because they weren't quite taut enough. All I have left to do are sew the cent central hoop ribbons and then put on the new waist tapes and this baby will be done. Since y'all are probably tired of listening to me babble on, let's just skip straight to the reveal.
All right, let's talk about these hoops. Firstly, they're way wider than I anticipated. Too wide for the specific time period I'm looking at. But you know, that's okay. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm not aiming for historical accuracy with this particular project. It's a cosplay. And the truth is the wideness of the hips is actually more like the photo I'm referencing than my original design. It's also quite flawed. The sides are definitely sisters and not twins. The centers front and back are bendy and weird, probably because I made them wider. Making a pannier beautifully like the extant one is a skill learned over time. Something I, and probably you if you attempt this, won't ever accomplish because who needs more than one of these? The original boning I ordered got lost in the mail and it took me two months to get a replacement. Not because of the fault of the seller, but because USPS is a little unorganized right now. This project has set me back considerably in time frame and caused me a lot of stress during my busiest time of the year. That being said, I'm happy with the results. They're going to serve the purpose I need and I'm quite proud of tackling such a difficult task. Synthetic versus steel. As far as whether or not I made the right decision to use synthetic whalebone over steel, I'll say this, I don't regret my choice. Being able to poke holes in it meant I was able to forego some otherwise really complicated joint issues. It's a million times lighter than it would have been if it was steel, and comfort is a big thing with me. On the other hand, I think it would have looked more refined and professional if I'd used steel. It would hold its shape a lot better and I wouldn't have the buckling issues I'm having or have had to reinforce some of the ribbons with wire. Of course, I also would never have gotten a comfortable center back and front shape and probably would have been more uncomfortable in the long run because of the weight. So I think it's going to be a personal preference whether you want it to look more professional or be more comfortable and easier to work with. A couple more notes and we'll call it a day. First, like I said before, this was a physically demanding project. If you have joint issues, wrist issues, or any kind of problem with pain in your hands, just stick with the normal pocket hoops. It's going to be too much for you. I also think this would have been easier with a heat gun, but I was concerned about melting, so I opted for the hairdryer. If anyone has had experience heat shaping synthetic whalebone and would like to offer us some insight into this or even a better way to shape the boning, please shoot me a comment down below and I'll pin it so we can all see. From here, there are only two more videos left in this series. First, my wearable modernized English gown mock-up. I literally just finished it the night before I filmed this and I love it. That video should go up in two weeks time. Then finally the big reveal, the David Bowie inspired English gown with its yards and yards and yards of white soutache trim. Might not be the next video that comes out. Not sure how long it's going to take. <laughs> but since I plan to wear it to the gala at Costume College at the end of July, if you'd like to be notified when those videos come out, you can click the little bell button for notifications. If you liked this video, please remember to hit the thumbs up button. It helps the algorithm figure out what you like to see and helps people like you find my weird little channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, and if you'd like to make my day, I would love to hear from you. Leave me a comment down below, let me know what you're working on, tell me a joke, or contemplate the existence of life. I appreciate each and every one of you spending time with me today. Thanks y'all. I'll catch you later. All right, I did this all a minute ago off camera and it was fine. And now it's just a complete babble. <laughs> Flop. All right. I got home from work tomorrow and sat down and looked at this hoop that I had. This ribbon with the paint on it is really stiff and hard to poke through. Oh my God, don't listen to me.